Now for the final segment with LAUSD, right here on ION. We've heard a lot from the community and we've, we actually, and again, credit to uh, Local District 8 and facilities, uh, we've heard different concerns and I brought up the pool. I mean, we, we had it configured differently before and we changed it, we heard about the concerns. We relocated the field. Uh, we've added in some sound barriers to the back where we have deliveries. I mean, all those were inputs from, uh, from Pam and different people. Um, and we incorporate those in how we can, you know, make our plans better. Um, and Pam brought up a good point too is, and this is true across all the school district, we had the bond dollars to eliminate overcrowding and multi-track. And in doing so, we, and facilities are an excellent job. We have uh, state-of-the-art facilities, but we also created a second problem, the inequity. We have the old San Pedro, and now we have this beautiful annex. And that was the whole point of Measure Q. Now, unfortunately, the economy has gone a little crazy. Um, we could sell the bonds and the taxes will go up, but this is the wrong time to do that. So we're going to hold off on the Measure Q, um, but those dollars are intended to modernize San Pedro. We are spending a little bit of the dollars right now, and we're doing a survey of the family of San Pedro schools, and we are going to look at San Pedro High School. We're going to do a full assessment, not only for how we're going to plan to remove all those bungalows that have been there uh, probably old, old, older than I am, and how are we going to move those? Where's the best place to put this two-story building? Where does Jeanette envision to have that? What other improvements can we do? Because the smart way to do um, improvements is not just going to do a two-story building, but while we're there, it's cheaper to pour more concrete and do more improvements instead of coming back three or four or five different times for five different projects. Let's just make it one, let's do it right the first time, and let's give San Pedro the improvements they need. So um, that is the commitment that we have from the board member from the local district eight. And then you have Jeanette here that's holding us accountable. She has our feet to the fire. She's always asking for more, but you know, she needs more. So uh, we're trying to accommodate her, and it's going it's to be a little rough over the next couple of years, but we're going to get there. We're, we're going to make it happen, and when Measure Q kicks in, we will have some of the modernization that San Pedro needs. My philosophy, and I will take this back with my team, is that the permits that we grant in an overcrowded school should be incredibly limited, maybe just for a few employees who work in the area and need their children to attend the school. It is what we call child care permits. I understand your point. You don't want to have students parking in the neighborhood. We, we, we heard that loud and clear. Excellent point. So 80 slots for students, approximately and approximately 112 for faculty and staff. The, the other spaces, um, they weren't described as student parking because they're part of the, the joint use with the pool. But during school operations, no one's going to be using the pool but the students. So we'll have the 80 spaces. There's actually an additional 20 along the side road that are kind of uh, tandem parking. So there is about actually about 100 spaces there part of the, the joint use pool project that the students will use after school when the students are not there and the weekends when the students aren't there is then reverted to the joint use with the city for the pool operations. Here, here's, here's where what I can clarify. Again, back to the magnet. San Pedro High School attendance area students have first priority to the magnet. Even though it was a court order where we had to have students from other areas be a part of it, hence the 85, 15% that I mentioned, San Pedro High School students have first priority. Your question having to do with the Palisade students here, the, the, the challenge with that is because the school is for San Pedro High School students, we have not been able to prioritize one certain geographical area because of the agreement that it would be San Pedro High School, rather than if you're building a school for a certain neighborhood. So that unfortunately, there's pros and cons to everything. None of these decisions have been easy, but when we made the decision based on community recommendations for one school, it's then open to all San Pedro High School attendance area kids.